Today's spoiler-free anime review covers both seasons of Megalobox. Just a heads up, if you weren't a fan of season 1 and skipped its sequel, then I think you'll be surprised with how well it turned out, so stay tuned. Megalobox is set in a futuristic world where boxers are aided by performance-enhancing machines. You're probably wondering what difference these machines make. The truth is, virtually nothing. It's a gimmick that's occasionally integrated well into the story, but for the most part, they could just as easily be fancy jackets. If we break down the individual components of boxing, we'll get power, speed, endurance, and accuracy. So naturally, adding a machine will increase at least one of these components, yet it's animated in a way that closely represents realistic boxing. It's common in anime to see someone who looks unnaturally strong to use attacks that are just as supernatural, we we also see the same thing with scrawny teens with special powers. Megalobox does the opposite and it doesn't feel right. They have muscle-bound men wearing heavy contraptions intending to increase their already lethal abilities, yet what we see is rarely different than regular boxing. If these machines punched as rapidly as jackhammers, that would be understandable, but they don't. We could assume it makes them hit harder, but their target is just an ordinary human body and their impact is relatively the same as in regular boxing. What about endurance? I can't think of anyone who would immediately gain endurance while carrying a 75-pound machine on their back. Furthermore, in most cases, these machines stop at their wrist, which would add just as much extra force to their fist as their opponent's face, so that is immediately a hindrance considering how many punches are blocked by their opponent's metal arms. Finally, on occasion, it's been known to increase a boxer's response time, but only three boxers out of the entire series had this feature, and that's because they were using AI or it was hard wired into their nervous system. My point is, don't expect too much. Treat Megalobox like an ordinary boxing anime. Of course, there are a few times when the gear is thematically relevant, and that's good, but I think many people will be let down when they see how ordinary the boxing actually is. While I felt Season 2 vastly improved on the boxing animation, I still think it falls shy of other boxing anime like Hajime no Ippo. Now that that's out of the way, let's move on to the story, starting with Season 1. Megalobox follows a nameless boxer we'll call Joe, with nothing to his name besides the junky gear he wears on his back. To survive, he throws matches at the local boxing ring, but this meager existence doesn't satisfy his urge to compete. Instead, he craves real competition with every ounce of his being and feels like a caged animal when he's made to throw fights. One day, he sees an announcement for a large boxing tournament in the city, which calls out to him. Through a series of events involving his manager and ties to the mafia, Joe's allowed to participate, setting the story into motion. I enjoyed Megalobox because the boxing itself was only the means to convey the various characters' stories. It's enjoyable, but for me, the main appeal was the drama unfolding outside the ring. For for example, Joe and his manager struggles to break free from the Mafia, and my favorite character's arc was the double amputee veteran who struggled with suicidal thoughts. Of course, I also enjoyed the main rivalry between poor No-Gear Joe and Yuri, who's got the most technologically advanced armor in the world. It pushed the message of believing in yourself and how you can be good enough without the aid of technology. Plus, I admired how the rivalry wasn't antagonistic. Yuri sees some of himself and Joe, and Joe sees Yuri as the strong opponent who's capable of pushing his limits. Overall, the first season was just alright. I enjoyed a few matches and a few side characters, but as a whole, it felt inconsistent in both areas. For example, how was Joe able to throw so many consecutive matches in the beginning of the anime? All we did was watch him lose. Who would ever put money on this guy? Furthermore, where's the backstory that explains his skills? What makes him so good that he can go in the ring with geared boxers and fight them unarmed? I know we get a minor flashback in the second half, but in my opinion, it wasn't enough. Also, I felt the training scenes were things that just happened because they were expected, but never anything that actually pushed the boxers to a new level. It was enjoyable, but I expected them to do more to flesh out Joe considering how well they fleshed out its side characters using dramatically less screen time. Additionally, season 1 has a complete and satisfying ending despite getting a second season. Turns out it was only intended to be a one-season anime. I give season 1 a 7.5. 
Season 2 significantly widens the story's scope and virtually invalidates all my complaints due to how good its story was. It takes place seven years after the events of Season 1. If you enjoyed how dark the first season got with the veteran, then that's basically what you can expect for the whole second season. It touches on countless mature themes such as terminal illness, drug use, racism, death, depression, and coming to terms with morally great decisions that still manage to ruin your life. There were so many mature themes in Season 2 that it felt like a live-action TV drama. It got so dark and depressing that it was almost hard to watch. For example, one character eats painkillers off a dirty public bathroom floor and another gradually declines due to terminal cancer. Thankfully, this negativity was balanced out by numerous heartfelt and wholesome scenes. When I think back on Season 2, actually, Megalobox as a whole, the boxing itself doesn't even rank in terms of its most memorable moments. Instead, it's all about the characters' individual journeys and bonding with each other, at least in my opinion. Season 2 ended on an even more satisfying note than the first, with many emotional moments and a touching after story. While Season 1 had many areas of improvement, I consider Season 2 a surprising comeback. I can't think of any anime that featured such a dramatic shift in storytelling from one season to the next. I give Season 2 a 9 out of 10. While the boxing was just alright in Season 1 and enjoyable in Season 2, I wouldn't recommend Megalobox for the boxing aspect alone. Instead, I'd primarily recommend this anime to people looking for a dark and mature storyline who are patient and waiting for its plot and characters to truly shine in its second half. I won't recommend any anime for this one because the only boxing anime I know of are Hajime no Ippo and Ashito no Jo, and everyone's already seen those, so you can recommend me some if you like. What did you think of Megalobox? Like the video if you enjoyed it and share with a friend who wants some new mature anime to watch. Thanks to Nia-chan for third tier Patreon support and I'll see you tomorrow with my review of Wreck.